microphone. That wasn't good. There we go. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. We still got a little bit of an echo in here. Echo. Echo. Turn in your Bibles, if you will, to the book of Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. No, it's really bad, Dana. One, two, three, four, five, six. Go down to the equalizer and pull it down there. One, two, three, four, five. There we go. That's a little better. One, two. Keep going. One, two, three. A little more. One, two, three, four, five. Six there, that's that's a lot better. It still isn't where it should be, but it's pretty good. All right. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. <clears throat> Deuteronomy chapter 18. Pull this down just a little bit. There we go. Starting in verse number 9, it says, When thou art come into the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abomination of these nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or daughter to pass through the fire, or that uses deviation, or an observer of times, or an enchanter, or a witch, or a, a charmer, or a <clears throat> consulter of familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a Norman Kickster. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out uh, from before thee. <clears throat> thou shalt be perfect with the Lord thy God. For these nations which thou shalt possess hearkened unto the observers of time, and unto uh, div uh, diviners. Uh, but as for thee, the Lord thy God shall not suffer thee so to do. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. Thank you for your love. Thank you for having Law and Abba to take and be here and lead the music. We just thank you so much for all you've done for us. I pray now that you'll guide and direct us in all that we do and say. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. <clears throat> in First Peter chapter 5, in verse 8, it says this, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. <clears throat> Tonight's message, the title of it is evil. Evil. I'm going to preach an evil message tonight. Amen? Amen. And um, uh, for all of you in, in, um, on the internet, uh, you need to listen intently to this message because I want to help people tonight. I really do. And if people listen closely I really believe that I can be a help to those who are having problems in certain areas of their life. And I want to take and uh, do that tonight. <clears throat> but you know, in our lives, we make choices every day, don't we? We make choices for ourselves. We make choices for our children. We make choices for the family. <clears throat> and uh, sometimes we make good choices and sometimes we make bad choices, don't we? And, uh, but I want to look tonight uh, at a few things <clears throat> which... We should not seek, and, uh, and um, the number one thing is we should not seek evil. None of us should ever seek evil. <clears throat> Hang on just a second. I asked Abba tonight on the way over here what evil was, and he gave me all kinds of definitions and stuff, but none of them were right. <clears throat> so in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 29, it says, Then shall they call upon me. But I will not answer. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. For that they hated knowledge and did not choose the fear of the Lord. Isaiah 65, 12 says, Therefore will I number you uh, to the sword, and ye shall <clears throat> all bow down to the slaughter. Because when I called, ye did not answer. When I spake, ye did not hear. For, uh, but did evil before mine eyes, and did choose that 
wherein I delighted not. <clears throat> you know, all of us, believe it or not, we make evil choices all the time. Did you know that? There's not one of us anywhere, anywhere in this world, that does not make evil choices all the time. You say, well, I don't. I don't make evil choices. I don't make any evil choice at all. Every time you turn on the TV, you make an evil choice. Every time you take and watch a television program, you make an evil choice. It may not be the television program, but I guarantee that the, the advertisements are bad. I guarantee it. And uh, so we, uh, we make evil choices every day just by turning on the TV. We make evil choices by what music we listen to. Um, last week when we were at uh, um, um, uh, student convention, Brother Pickert talked about music, didn't he? And he told us, he says, you know what? He says, what you let go in here stays in there. It never comes out. And you'll always remember it for the rest of your life. And uh, so we need to take and realize that, that we make evil choices by listening to much of the music that we listen to. Uh, the, the books we read. You know, uh, there's an awful lot of books out there that we should not read. There's an awful lot of books out there that, that uh, shouldn't, uh, uh, Christians shouldn't even have in their possession. <clears throat> The videos we watch, the, CD, the DVDs that we watch. You know, there's people say, well, you know, they're just, they're a Christian movie. Well, let me tell you something. They may not be a Christian movie on my standards. <clears throat> How about the games that we let our kids uh, play uh, on, the or on, in, on the internet or uh, even uh, Xbox and all of them? You know, uh, the game itself may not be that bad. But look at some of the figures in it. Look at the way the figures are dressed. Look at the way they uh, handle themselves and things. Listen, it's all evil. It's evil. You've got to take and be careful of the evil that you allow to go into your eyeballs. You need to have, be careful about the evil that you let go into your ears. <clears throat> How about the places we go? You know, do we all go to church every day? No, we don't. You know, there's an awful lot of people who go to a lot of evil places every single day. And they may say, well, you know what, it's not that evil to go here or go there. <clears throat> I can go to a bar I don't drink. Listen, if you go there, I guarantee you're going to fall into evil sometime. Guarantee it. <clears throat> what about uh, the places we allow our children to go? How many of you know exactly the parents and everything like that of all the, children, all, all the places your children go? There was a, a news clip on TV the other night. A 14-year-old girl was abducted in uh, Chicago. And the reason she was abducted is because mom let her go with one of her friends from school. She had no idea who the parents were. She didn't even know where they lived. But yet she went home, with, allowed her daughter to go home with them. Here they were not very nice people. They abducted her and they killed her. And uh, <clears throat> listen... You need to make sure we know where our children are going. Well, what about the people that we associate with? What about the evil people that we associate with? You know, there's an awful lot of people in the world today that we should not associate with. There's an awful lot of people that are all over the world that we should not associate with. You know, I, I got to thinking as I was doing this message, I thought, you know, just think of the world around us. You know, if a person does not know the Lord Jesus Christ as their, their personal Savior, hey, we shouldn't have anything to do with them. Oh, we could try to lead them to the Lord. But listen, don't be good friends with them. Because I guarantee you will not build them up. They'll drag you down into their cesspool just like everybody else. we got to realize we have to be so careful who we have associations with. But God has given us the ability to choose. You know, we can choose... <clears throat> to believe the Bible, and, uh, um, or we can reject it as just another book. We can choose to read the Bible, or we can use it as a paperweight. We can choose to believe God answers prayer, or that he is just not real. We can choose life eternal or life damnation. We can choose being saved or rejecting the Savior. You know, um, we can choose uh, to come to church or stay home. You know, there's an awful lot of people <clears throat> that think that they can get by life without going to church. 
in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25, it says, Not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another, and so much more, as ye see the day approaching. What that verse is saying is this. We need to take and be in church as often as we can. We need to take and assemble ourselves together with people of like mind, like faith, and we should have fellowship with them. <clears throat> there are so many people today that say, well, you know, I don't need to go to church. I can worship God wherever. The Bible says that we need to assemble ourselves together. We need to get together on a regular basis. We need to take and come together as a family in Christ. <clears throat> You know, we can choose to get involved in a church or we can just be a pew warmer. You know, God has given us the free will to choose uh, what is right and what is wrong. You know, many people today <clears throat> have um, chose the wrong paths to take in life. You know, um, they sit in the bars on Friday and Saturday night and uh, do not feel that they need to go to church on Sunday morning. I talked to a, um, a young lady the other day, and I said to her, I said, well, how are things going now that you're out of school and you have, you know, no cares in the world? And this is what she said. She says, I'm living life to the fullest. And I said, well, I said, does that mean you're not going to church? No, I don't go to church. I said, so what you're doing is you're living life the fullest for the devil. And she goes, what do you mean by that? I said, well, do you go to the bars? Yeah. Do you go to the clubs? Yeah. So I said, you're living life to the fullest for Satan, not for Christ. I said, what's wrong with you, girl? That isn't the way you were brought up. <clears throat> you know, so many times this is what happens. Young people fall into sin <clears throat> and they think it's okay to do it. You know, many have chosen ball games and uh, recreation more, and they think that's more important than worshiping God. Yeah, I know people that have cottages. I know people that have uh, places up in the White Mountains and stuff. They get away in the summertime because it's hot down here. But listen, don't put that in front of God because it becomes a God to you. We got to take and make sure that God is number one in our life. <clears throat> you know, many times it's easier to choose the things which are evil than the things which are good. You know, it's easier to let our children do the things that they want to do rather than say, no, you're not going to do that. We're going to have family time. You know, <clears throat> too, many, too many parents want to be friends to their children rather than parents. There's way too many people that say, oh, I want to be a buddy to my daughter. Oh, I want to be a buddy to my son. Listen, Kids can get all the friends they want in school or on the street. They only have one set of parents. And you've got to raise them in the nurture and abnurition of the Lord. <clears throat> but <clears throat> who likes to fight with your kids? You know, let's face it. You know, I know when my kids were growing up, I would give them spankings when they didn't listen. I did. And we would go into a, um, a grocery store or something like that, and they would want something. So what do they do right away? You know, four or five years old. Oh, Daddy, you won't let me have that. You're so mean. You know? And I looked at him and I said, what? You won't let me have that. Oh, I don't like you anymore. <clears throat> that was not something to tell me. I would grab a hold of their little hand very gently. Well, not very gently. And we would go out of the store. And they knew what was going to happen. Because they started screaming and hollering in the store. Don't spank me! Don't beat me! Everybody looks at me. And we go outside. And we go over by the car. And I usually went between two cars. And I gave them a spanking. I made sure they understood what they did wrong and the punishment of what it was going to happen. <clears throat> Am I a child abuser? No. Nope. I was never a child abuser. However, I did. I always put the Board of Education to the seat of the pants. You know, 
children, I believe, many times their brain sinks from here to here. And that's why we have to beat here to get the brain back up here, you know. <clears throat> and I believe that's what God was telling, what, what he said in, uh, when Solomon wrote uh, that spoil, or, uh, spare the rod, spoil the child. You know, we need to beat them brains back from their backside back up to their head. <clears throat> you know, if we allow them to get away with everything by choosing um, things that are contrary to God's word, we've ruined our children. The second thing is this. We choose <clears throat> evil companions. In Psalms chapter 1, verse 1, it says, Blessed is the man that walketh not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor standeth in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful. Proverbs 24, 1 says, Be not thou envious against evil men, neither desire <clears throat> to be with them, for their heart <clears throat> studieth destruction, and their lips talk of mischief. You know, we choose our friends, don't we? All of us choose our friends. You know, there's kids that like Ovid, and there's kids that don't like Ovid. You know, they choose their friends. <clears throat> you know, we can choose our friends, but you know what? We can't choose our relatives. Have you ever noticed that? You know, um, all of us can choose our friends, but we cannot choose our relatives. Sometimes we marry into some very, very bad situations. <laughs> but you know, King David, he chose his friends very well. He chose his friends, <clears throat> and um, these men were not the kindest, gentlest guys on the face of this earth. However, they knew how to fight. And these are the ones that David had around him all the time. He had men around him that weren't afraid to get in and get the job done, period. <clears throat> Those were his friends. These guys were not very fun-loving, but they were there and they were loyal to David. They would do anything David wanted them to do. After all, there was three of them that took off in the middle of a fight with the Philistines, broke through the Philistines' line, went to Jerusalem, or to Bethlehem, and got him water and brought it back to him. Now, how many soldiers would do that for their commanding officer? Go get him a bottle of water. And, uh, but they did, because they loved David. <clears throat> Ammon had a friend. Turn your Bibles to 2 Samuel chapter uh, 13 real quick. 2 Samuel chapter 13. Second Samuel chapter 13, it says, It came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar. And Ammon, the son of David, loved her. And Ammon was so vexed that he fell sick for his sister Tamar, for, he had, for she was a virgin. And Ammon thought it hard for him to do anything to her. But this is the part I want you to see. But you notice whenever... There's the word but in the Bible. You better look very closely what, it's, what the but is for. It says, but Ammon had a friend. Ammon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of uh, Shimea, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man. You know, here we see that, that uh, um, <clears throat> Ammon had a friend. Ammon chose his friends. Ammon chose, he didn't have to have Jonadab as a friend, but he chose him to be his friend. <clears throat> Ammon chose uh, an evil, crafty, that's what the word uh, subtle means, means crafty, uh, who in the end caused Ammon's death. Rehoboam, in 1 Kings chapter 12, verse 8, it says, But he forsook the counsel of the old men, which they had given him, and consulted with the young men, that were growing up with him, of which stood before him. Rehoboam was um, the son of King Solomon. Rehoboam was the one who got the throne after Solomon died. You know, the people wanted to have 
uh, some of their taxes lowered a little bit, kind of like we'd like to have once in a while, amen. We'd like to have the government say, okay, you know, we're going to take and lower your taxes. You're not going to have to pay so much in. But where we are now with $19 trillion debt, I don't think that'll ever happen. But they wanted their, their debt load to come down a little bit, and they wanted to do a little bit less work. You know, a lot of the people were working 18 hours a day, and they go home at night, and they didn't have any family time. And uh, all they wanted was just a little bit of a reprieve off of what uh, Solomon had done to them. But here we see that Rehoboam um, wouldn't hear of it. You know, the, <clears throat> the people wanted their, um, uh, it lightened, and he, all, he listened to the young guys. He, hey, he listened to the millennials. Instead of listening to the old gray hair guys like Chuck, he listened to the millennials. And he took their advice rather than taking the old men's advice. The old men, they were wise. They knew exactly what to do. They had been under King Solomon. They had seen Solomon's wisdom. And they would not, and Rehoboam would not take their advice. Why? Because he wanted to be buddies with his friends. He wanted to be drinking buddies and go places with them. And he figured he would be a, a great buddy if he would listen to them instead of the old guys. <clears throat> it's no different with us. We choose <clears throat> who we'll hang around with. You know, um, we look for people that we have common interests to, don't we? You know, I look at people and, and I start talking to them and I find out what their interests are, sports, skiing, hunting, shooting, sewing, cooking. You know, we want somebody around who we can have communications with, right? I mean, you know, <clears throat> if I was friend with Abed, and all Abed wanted to do was sit there and play on his phone all the time. And I don't like playing on phones. Well, you know what? We have nothing in common. So I'd say, well, you go and you be a friend of, uh, of Jacob's because Jacob likes to play on his phone all the time. You know, he just constantly is going like this. You know, that's why they have the, uh, they said that there's over a 500% increase in corporal tunnel. And it's from kids going like, you know, playing on their phones all the time. You know, yeah, yep. And uh, so here we see that, <clears throat> but we look for somebody that we have something in common with. You know, we want somebody around <clears throat> who we can, can com communicate with. You know, many times we are as Ammon and Rehoboam. Uh, we seek evil com uh, companions, even though they may have the same interests as us. They they are evil. And the reason they're evil is because they don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. You know, we seek people who, are, who have something in common with us, thinking that they're going to be friends with us, and maybe we can lead them to the Lord. I guarantee it won't happen. Guarantee it. They're going to lead you down the wrong road before you lead them to the Lord. I guarantee it. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14. <clears throat> Turn there real quick. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 through, I think it's 17. <clears throat> 2 Corinthians 6, 14. You know, we need to be careful with the friends that we, that we pick. We need to be careful uh, about the people that we hang around with. 2 Corinthians chapter 6, there in verse 14, that says, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship hath righteousness with unrighteousness? And what communion hath light with darkness? And what concord hath Christ with Belial? And what part hath he <clears throat> that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement hath the temple of God with idols? For ye are all the temple of the living God. As God has said, I will dwell in them and walk in them. And I will <clears throat> be their God and they will be my people. Wherefore, come out from among them. And be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive thee. <clears throat> you know, there are a lot of people who I feel would be great friends to have. You know, I believe they'd be super, super friends to have. But you know, I feel that I don't have one thing in common with them, and that's the Lord Jesus Christ. 
If they'd be saved, I go, man, alive. Okay, brother, let's do something. Let's go there. Let's go shooting. Let's whatever. But I feel that there's an awful lot of people out there that we could be friends with if they knew the Lord. But if they don't know the Lord, stay away from them. You know, I separate myself <clears throat> from other pastors. If they don't believe the way I do, I don't want to have anything to do with them. You know, have you ever noticed that our church doesn't do a lot of fellowshipping with other churches in town? Have you noticed that? Why is that? Because we don't have anything in common with them. You know, they don't believe in salvation. They don't believe, a lot of them don't believe in immersion, uh, baptism by immersion. A lot of them don't believe that a person needs to be saved in order to get to heaven. Listen, we need to be careful that we separate ourselves from them. Have no Zero communications with them. I separate myself, though, many times from, from preachers who don't believe the exact same way I do. And it's hard many times. There's a lot of these guys I'd love to be friends with. I like to do things. I like to go to preachers' conferences and stuff with them. But I don't because I don't like the doctrine that they're preaching in their churches. You know, we must be careful who we have companionship with, <clears throat> as not to let people think we're just like everybody else. You know, I had a, a knock on the door the other night, <clears throat> and um, there was a couple there, and um, I knew who they were the minute they walked up, because they had a little watch watchtower uh, pamphlet they wanted to give me. And uh, <clears throat> I looked at them, and I said, uh, and what do you believe? Well, I believe just like you do. I said, no, you don't. They was, yes, we do. We believe just exactly like you do. What religion are you? I said, I'm Muslim. <laughs> they go, what? I said, yeah, I'm Muslim. <clears throat> I said, so you believe just like I do, right? And they looked at me and they go, um, I think so. I said, oh, really? I said, you know what? I don't want to have anything to do whatsoever with your religion. None. Zero. And the reason I don't is because you don't know what you believe. You have no idea what your doctrine is. And I says, see ya. I didn't even ask, offer him Godspeed. I just said, see ya. And I shut the door and I went back in the house. <clears throat> what we need to be careful of is people come and say, well, I'm just like you are. I have the same religion you do. No, they don't. They don't believe the same as we do. They don't believe that it takes the blood of Jesus Christ to save us from our sin. They don't believe that Jesus came. He uh, died on the cross. He was buried. He rose again the third day according to the scripture. They don't believe that. Don't have fellowship with them. Don't have them as friends. You know, we need to make... We need not to make evil choices. We need to not to have evil companions. And the third thing is this. We need not to have evil passions. We don't need to have evil passions. You know, one night I was flipping through the channels on TV. And I have direct TV and there's a lot of channels. I was going through there. And I counted 65, 65 different TV shows that were on at that very moment that had the occult in it, that had Satanism in it, that had something other than I believed in it. Listen to me. It's so easy today to get into the occult. It's so easy today to get <clears throat> our minds wrapped up in the things that we shouldn't have them wrapped up in. Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12, it says... For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Turn to Ephesians chapter 6 because we're going to be there in just a little bit. <clears throat> but listen to me. We're in a spiritual warfare. If you don't think that you're in a spiritual warfare, you're living in a cocoon. You are. You're living in a vacuum and you're saying, oh, everything is right in my father's house. You know what I mean? Listen to me. We're in a spiritual warfare. We're not fighting against flesh and blood. We're fighting against principalities. We're fighting against things that we cannot see. 
And you need to understand that, people. We're fighting against things that are out there that, that are stronger than we are. You know, we need to guard our passions for what, <clears throat> um, um, and be careful of what we allow to go into our minds and our hearts. You know, I refuse to even look at a lot of the uh, advertisements on TV. You know, if a, a commercial comes on TV that I'm not just too sure of, I shut the TV off. You know, <clears throat> I've used this illustration a couple different times, but <clears throat> we had an evangelist here one time, and he was talking about his little boys. They were only three and four years old at the time. And they go driving down the interstate, <clears throat> and all of a sudden you'd see a billboard, and you go, Duck! And boom, just like that, they laid right on on the seat. And it was okay. And then they get up after he went by it. But there was something there he did not want his children to see. You know, if we would have parents guard their children's eyes and guard their minds, we would have a lot better uh, children in our homes. <clears throat> you know, I refuse to um, watch the things that are put out by Hollywood. You know, witches, demons, ungodly beings <clears throat> uh, from the dead, these are all evil in the sight of God. You know, in the passage of Scripture that we read earlier, witches, sorcerers, fortune tellers, astrologer, uh, these are all not to have, we're not to have fellowship with them. <clears throat> you know, how easy it is in the morning. And I used to do this years ago. I used to do it every morning. I would take and go to the newspaper. I would go have a cup of coffee in the morning on my way to work. And the first thing I'd do is open up the newspaper and look at my horoscope to find out what kind of a day I was going to have. Isn't that stupid? How does an idiot know in the paper what kind of a day I'm going to have? Yeah. Well, listen, what we need to realize, this stuff's all junk. It's all garbage. And we need to guard ourselves from it. <clears throat> You know, how easy it, is it to dial 1-800-FORTUNE and get your fortune told over the phone? How easy is it to go to a palm reader and have your life story told to you? You know the thing I found real interesting? <clears throat> Gilbert High School. Downtown Gilbert. Have you ever went past there on Arizona Boulevard? Look across the street from Gilbert High School. There's a palm reader over there. We went over there, past there one noon, and there were six kids lined up outside waiting to go in and have their palms read. I'm thinking to myself, what in the world is going on here? You know, why is it kids are looking to the occult instead of studying and trying to get their ahead that way? You know, we've become so calloused to wrong in, in our lives that we've, we don't even know what good is anymore. You know, our passion for excitement, drama, comedy, fiction, and true life have become so evil that God has said, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. One day, I'll tell you what, he's going to destroy all this stuff. He is. He's going to take care of all of it just like that. <clears throat> you know, our passion for entertainment, you know, when I was talking to this girl, I said to her, I said, well, I said, where's one of your favorite places to go? And she said, well, she says, the, one of my favorite places is during the uh, uh, Phoenix Open, uh, when they have that, I go to the bird's nest every night. It's a bar. <clears throat> I said, oh, really? She goes, yeah. She said, oh, she, there's thousands of people in there. They've got good music. And I said to her, I said, so then what happens afterwards? She said, oh, I can't tell you that part. Listen, what we need to realize is that people are looking for excitement in all the wrong places. You know, <clears throat> when society's passion becomes more for evil than a passion for souls, God will correct the problem. I guarantee it. He's going to bring something upon us that we don't like trying to get us to turn Back to him. And if you don't believe me, go into the Old Testament. And look what God did to Israel. God's still punishing Israel today. Why? Because they wouldn't do what he wanted them to. 
They wouldn't hold on to the commandments. They wouldn't continue to do the sacrifices that they were supposed to do. They wanted to be just like everybody else. And that's just exactly what's happening in our churches today. We've got teenagers that want to be like everybody else. They want to look like everybody else. They want to talk like everybody else. And they want to go to the same place everybody else goes. And it's wrong. When society's passion becomes more evil than what is good, God is going to take care of the problem. All a person needs to do is just read the Old Testament. Just go through it. And you look, go to the book of Judges, by the way. Not right now, but uh, sometime. Read the book of Judges. Read the book of Judges and see what God does to Israel. You know, he puts them into bondage. Okay, they're in bondage. Then all of a sudden, he gets a, um, a savior, so to speak, or a, a man to get them out of the bondage. And then they go right back in again. They never learned their lesson. We need to not make evil choices. We need to not make evil companions. We need to not have evil, evil passions. <clears throat> but you may be saying, preacher, how can I overcome these evil things which <clears throat> may want to have control of my life? Well, you know what? I'm glad you asked me that because I'm going to tell you how to overcome it. <clears throat> Ephesians chapter 6, verses 13 to 17. It says, wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to withstand in the evil days. And having done all to stand, stand therefore, having your <clears throat> loins girt about with truth, having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace, above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts, of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints. You know, if we would do this every morning, if we would turn to Ephesians chapter 6, and we'd read those short verses every morning, then you know what? When you walked out of the house, you'd have the full armor on. You'd have everything on your body covered except what? Your back. You'd, you look at that, and you have your breastplate, you have your, your loins girded, you have your feet shod, you have your loins <clears throat> uh, covered, you have a shield in front of you, you got the helmet on, but there's nothing protecting your back. Why is that? We should never turn our back on Satan. We should hit him right head on every time. Because that's where we're protected. We shouldn't turn our back on Satan. <clears throat> you know, each morning when we get up, we need to read this passage of scripture and put the whole armor of God on. Have our loins girded with truth the breastplate of righteousness, our feet shod with preparation of the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the Spirit, which is the Word of God. We need the whole body covered from the head to the feet, ready to do war with the evil one. <clears throat> Always pressing forward toward the mark of the high calling of the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, in this time of our society, we need to be ready to fight for the right. We must have the armor on to withstand the battle, which is going to be in front of us. You know, every day I pray for our president. You know, I, I'll tell you what, I, I feel so bad for him, I really do. Because from all, all sides, he's getting bombarded. The media hates him. The Democrats hate him. I mean, Everybody hates him. But you know what? He's getting things done. I mean, this, this country has turned 180 degrees around and we're starting to go the right direction again. <clears throat> Jobs are coming back to the United States. Taxes have went down. We need to realize that he's doing that which is right. And the reason he is, is I believe he goes and he talks to God every day. I really do. 
I believe that he prays and asks God to take and guide his steps every day. But you know, we need to remember that we have to stay away from evil things in our life. We have to make sure that the evil that comes within us is kept away. All of us, you know, it's easier to take and be an evil than it is good. Do you know how easy it is to go up here to the, um, the um, oh, that place on the other side of the bridge, what's it called? Huh? No. Oh, do you go there? Oh. I knew, I knew he would know where it was. But anyway, <clears throat> you know, River Bottom, you know what? I'll tell you what, our article in the paper was beautiful. Do you see that? Oh, yes, it Above is. it, it said 20-year anniversary, you know, for, for uh, and then right underneath it, they're tearing down a bar down, downtown. I'm going, yes, <laughs> amen. In fact, I had three people email me on that. They went and they saw the, uh, the, um, the paper, and they, they emailed me, and they said, Pastor Storm, did you, did you notice that? I said, yeah, I noticed that. Isn't that great? And, uh, but, you know, God is still working. And we just need to take and be careful that we don't fall in to the evil of the devil. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for tonight. We thank you for this message on, on evil. I just pray, Lord, that you may help us to make the right choices. Help us not to make evil choices. Help us to have good companions that we don't have evil companions. And Father, help our passion. Help our passion to be what it should be. Father, I just love you so much. I just pray now that you'll continue to guide and direct us in all that we do and say. Father, you, we love you. We thank you for what you've done in our lives. And I just pray now for the people who are here tonight that <clears throat> they might make the right choices in their lives. Father, the ones that are out on the internet tonight, I just pray that they might make the right they wouldn't have evil choices, they wouldn't have evil companions, and they wouldn't have evil passions. Father, be with us now, I pray. Guide us and direct us in all that we do and say, and we'll give you the praise and thanks. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We still on? For everybody that's out in, on the internet <clears throat> next weekend, we're going to have our anniversary Sunday. We're going to be 20 years old. This church uh, was started 20 years ago. And this is going to be our 20-year anniversary. And if you're in the area of Florence, we'd like to invite you to come to the celebration. It's going to start at 9 o'clock on Sunday morning, and we're going to get done around 3 o'clock. We're going to have lunch on the grounds. And we would like to invite everybody to come if you're in this area and join us. But most of all, I want you to take and make sure that you go to a local New Testament church. You need to go to church every Sunday. You need to be part of that church. You need to grow in that church. <clears throat> and if you do that, I guarantee you're going to live a happy and successful life. God bless you all.